Okay, everybody here? Anybody else? I think that's it. Okay, hi, uh, in case you don't know me, I'm Chris. Uh, I do mainly our web and tech support stuff here, and then you've probably also met Lenny and um, also Todd who are back there, and we're basically the three people who will uh, be able to answer any questions. Um, so we'll pretty much go over, just give you a quick overview of the source board and a couple different LED options, and then from there, you guys can play with it. We got a bunch of gels, gobos, so you can sort of see how it works together, and speak of the devil, there is Lenny, sorry. Wrong way. I'm okay with devil. Okay. I've been called worse. That was it. Anyway, the it was. First thing I've been called yes. It's just the first thing off my head. So anyway, so what you probably most of you came here to see is this guy here, which is the Source Forward, um, or some of our ETC friends like to say uh, the Source 48, because there are 48 individual little LEDs there. Um, one of the really nice things about the Source Forward is with most LED fixtures, it's just a pure flat field, which in some cases, like if you're doing a gobo projection, is great. Um, but if you're trying to overlap beams, then it can kind of look a little funky. Um, so with the Source Forward, it's got a little Z knob on the back, so you can actually adjust the peak or the beam flatness. Um, of your beam, and so that way, if you're overlapping, um, you know, fixtures, it gives you a nice, uh, lot more even wash. Um, in terms of control, while it is dimmable um, via traditional mains dimmers, we generally do not recommend it. Um, if you have ETC dimmers, if you have some really specific settings, you can get pretty good dimming down about five percent or so. Um, but non-ETC dimmers, it's sort of a mix and match type thing. If they're not, if they're regulated, then what happens is below about 10, 15%, the LED can strobe, some weird stuff can happen. So while dimming works generally good and good enough for like setting levels, we wouldn't what call it theatrical dimming, which is actually sort of what ETC re refers to it as. Um, but other than that, um, pretty simple, just two push buttons. And the RJ45 ports are not for streaming ACN or any network stuff. It's just regular DMX and you use um, cheaper cable essentially. So the DMX. So. On to seeing it. So um, actually, uh, our Todd, if right over there, <laughs> not over there, yeah, or, or yeah, anybody. Basically, we're gonna throw on the um, tungsten source four and then the source forward. And so these are fixtures right up here, so you can sort of see. Um, Basically, the source forward is essentially about as bright as a 575 watt source four. Um, in terms of the photometrics, it's a little bit brighter, but I mean, that's, it's really sort of small um, and it's something most people probably wouldn't even notice. Um, so I don't know, Todd, if you want to sort of alternate back and forth between those two so you can sort of get an idea for it. Um, the source forward. Yes. And there's the traditional punch. Yeah. 115 volt or? Yes. Yeah, and this is a long life lamp for the tungsten one. So, the yeah. Life, so it's not the 115? Uh, well, it is the 115, but it's the X version, so it lasts okay. about 2,000 hours okay. instead of the 300, um, which is a shorter, but that's good for video. Maybe. Yes. Because these fixtures, to get it apples to apples, we pulled all these barrels out of rental inventory, so they're well loved. <laughs> so I can't tell you exactly what lamp is in that fixture. So to, we didn't want special barrels or anything else so any of the your traditional source boards literally just came off the ripple shelf because how many of you know unequivocally that you have the same lamp in everything <laughs> excellent <laughs> so i can't tell you exactly what lamps in there yeah Essentially, yeah, but it most likely is. Um, anyways, you can sort of see the difference is really close. Um, and with pretty much all these fixtures, we have two source forwards, one up there, and then one here you can get your hands on. Um, we're using the DMX dimming on those, um, as we mentioned, sort of the theatrical quality. Um, and like Lenny mentioned, um, all the lens tubes are 36 degrees. They're not the EDLT ones. Um, so if you are using the EDLT, you'll actually get a little bit more brightness out of it, in addition to sort of better contrast and projection for gobos. Um, so yeah, so anyway, those are the basic fixtures there. Um, Todd, maybe if you just want to run through the other ones in a row that we've got up here, and we got some of them down here as well. Um, so this is just a standard 575 watt tungsten, which you guys saw before. Um, the next one, this is the Renew fixture. Um, so this is one of the earlier fixtures that came out. Um, it's a bit more pricey now, it's fairly good quality, um, but like the rest of them, essentially just a warm white LED. Um, and that one is the Altman Phoenix, um, the Phoenix 2 specifically. So I think uh, it's pretty close in terms of the brightness to the source forward, but um, it's another fixture. And most of these fixtures also have like color changing options as well, but that's sort of not what we're um, getting into today. Um, the next one, this is the uh, Source 4 LED Series 2 tungsten. Um, so this is 
pretty much about as bright as well. Um, it's not quite as bright. Um, it's a little bit dimmer, but really good quality light. Um, with this one, you can also adjust the color, temperature, and tint. So if you're trying to really match something for video or something, um, that can be helpful. Um, the next one, hopefully if it comes on or... Uh -oh. You guys skip to because you're, you're on oh. the tent. Yes. So one more. There it is. And so this is the Series 1 Tungsten. Um, so if you want to just uh, alternate between this and the Series 2 briefly, Todd, so you can sort of see the Series 1's near, near as bright, um, but it is a fixed temperature pretty much. So um, what you see is what you get. You can't adjust any color temp or things. It is cheaper though, so um, that's nice there. And that's, yeah, the Series 1. And then the only last one is the Source Forward, which I'm sure you're all here to see. Um, we've got most of those down here. So we've got the in one, uh, this is the Series 1 tungsten, and the Source Forward, and then a 750 watt um, HPL. So we can sort of have a bunch of gels here. Um, we gotta have you guys go through that. Is there any questions or anything like that so far from people? And I should have said interrupt me at any time if you have any questions. Yeah. Uh, has ETC released um, profile for the Source Forward? I mean, as far as like using with the console, what's the deal there? Uh, uh, you mean like a full fixture for it or? Yeah, so you can get the source forward two different ways. So you can either get it where it's just the retrofit kit, essentially just this guy, you drop it into your existing fixtures. Um, the other way you can do it is you can buy it like their LED fixtures. So like their source four LEDs has a, a shutter barrel. So you can do the same thing with the source forward. Actually not... was oh, sorry. Yeah. So on consoles, so mm -hmm. if you're, um, is there a profile set? For oh, got it, profile, yes, no. Um, so for the source forward, it's really simple, single channel, eight bit intensity. So pretty much you can just do it like a dimmer. Um, but even with yes. DMX dimming, like you said, so you, you, you set your, your, um, your dimming profile, if you're using mm -hmm. a dimmer for to power, let's say, 10 of these units, mm -hmm. um, and your chain between them, you'd still pick them as a dimmer and set the address to be those dimmer numbers. Oh, got it, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so in terms of operating this, so there's a two different ways. So there's mains dimmable. Um, if you're in mains dimmable, even if you have a 20 amp uh, dimmer, and even though this only takes 150 watts, you shouldn't use more than two of them on a circuit. Um, we haven't tried it, but according to ETC, where dimming stuff happens. Um, if you're using just a relay and you're using DMX control, then I believe you can do up to 14 on a circuit. Um, so yeah, other than that, and then you can sort of, see, you'll be able to see here when you sort of look at it, but it's really simple. There's just little push buttons right down there, and it's either AC or what sort of dimmer, dim, DMX address you want, and um, yeah, pretty simple there. Do you have a brain that the special cable makes out of, or? Uh, what do you mean, a brain for this guy? Or? Yeah, because you said it's not a regular DMX cable. Oh, no, yeah, it's just, so it's just RJ45, so it basically just allows you to use cheaper cable. Once I get that out of there, so just the same thing, or well, most people are wireless these days, but um, it's what you use to plug into your computer. Um, there's no converter, so essentially this just goes straight down here and it's just a five pin DMX. So there's no special converter. Um, we also have these adapters in stock, but um, as mentioned, it won't work on a lighting network or anything like that, just pure DMX 512. Um, just RJ45 connectors and cable are a lot cheaper than DMX cable, so that's the sort of main idea. Uh, there. All right, plug that back in there. Any other questions or? So far, I'm sure more will come up. <laughs> well, okay. temperature is variable from what to what? Uh, so with the source forward and with most of these fixtures, it's a fixed color temperature at 3,000 Kelvin. Uh, with the vast majority of these fixtures, you can also order them at different color temperatures. So if you were in like a sort of daylight situation with your TV studio or something, um, then you can order it like 5600 Kelvin. Um, it's not necessarily where you can specify color temperatures, it's usually either like 3000 or 56, but pretty much with all these fixtures, there's different options. Um, and with some of them, they also have, um, as ETC calls it, their like Studio HD lineup where you can actually dynamically adjust the color temperature. But in terms of what we're showing you today, it's pretty much all mainly just tungsten standard 3000K fixtures. Um, yeah. Any other questions so far? What's the price point on the source forward? The source forward, uh, uh, check our website to make sure. I'm pretty sure it's $600 or $599 per unit. Um, one of the things, and that price will last through the end of June. After that, it goes up by $100. Um, if you add the fixture body to it, I think it adds $200 to the price point. Um, one of the things with the source forward is there's a very specific pricing policy from ETC. So even if you're buying a thousand of them, we can't sell them to you for any less than $599. Otherwise, ETC cuts us off. Um, so 
really nobody can, it's just a fixed pricing, no way around it, unfortunately. Um, in terms of all the other fixtures, the ETC fixtures have an MAP pricing policy, so we list that on our website, but um, we generally would sell everything other than the source for it less than list, so just contact us for a quote and um, we can work out your needs and give you different options and things like that. Any other questions? Are you guys ready to sort of, or yeah? Yeah, of course. Has ETC set an end of life for their tungsten fixtures? Or? Not as far as I'm aware. I imagine they'll keep manufacturing those for a while. Yeah, and I'm just getting a little uh, head shake over there from our ETC rep. So, yeah, no. Um, and, yeah, so just different ones. And they're still great fixtures. So, um, yeah, that's it. Any other questions? You guys want to start testing gel or gobos? Or actually, oh, one other thing. I'll just bring up quickly here. Um, one thing to watch out for with certain LED fixtures and something that we would definitely encourage you to test. Um, I love the Altman fixture. It's really good at a lot of things. However, one of the things that um, can happen with certain LED fixtures is if you have like a breakup in it, so I'll bring this a little bit higher so you guys can see it. Um, so if you're just at sort of a sharp focus, not big, you know, too big of a deal, it's pretty good. When you go sort of out of focus, you can almost, or see a little bit of like pixelation type there, and that's just due to the LED array. Mm -hmm. um, so depending on your circumstances, it might not be a big deal, nobody might care, but if you have like really picky designers or things like that, that's something to watch out for. Um, with ETC, they have a little soft focus diffuser in it, so it can eliminate that completely, um, and we tried it all, the ETC pictures, and I didn't see any, so. That's uh, one of the other things you guys can test. Um, Altman doesn't have that same diffuser? Hmm? Altman doesn't have that same Altman diffuser. doesn't include it. Um, th this is an ETC pattern holder, so I'm sure you could order one for the Altman. Um, but um, in terms of, it wouldn't be warranted or anything like that. But the ETC one, we know for sure it's designed to work in that fixture. Nothing bad will happen with it. Um, the Altman fixture is a little bit higher powered with the LEDs, so nothing should happen. But since it's a different fixture, we can't guarantee you, you know, nothing bad would. So, um, and as far as I know, Altman doesn't make a version for that. Um, other than that, though, it's a nice bright fixture. So, it just depends on what your application is. All right. So, how, how yes. Do you make the white color? Hmm? How, how, how is the white color, what is it composed of? Uh, so for the vast majority of these fixtures, it's just a single white LED chip. So it's really similar if any of you guys have switched out to LEDs in your home for little like down lights or stuff like that. Um, it's just a single white color. You're not mixing RGB or anything like that to get the white. The one exception to that, um, and it's not down here, but the Series 2 uh, Tungsten HD from ETC, that uses sort of a mix of their X7 technology, and that's so they can actually have a dynamic color temperature. Um, um, so pretty much if you want to adjust color temperature at all, you need to have different arrays of LEDs. But most of these, except for the Series 2, is just standard fixed white LED, um, no change. You can certainly gel it, but... Um, so what's the yeah. color temperature? Uh, 3,000 Kelvin, for the most part, for most of these guys, if you look at the actual spec sheets, it can range from 29 to about 31 or so. Um, and as the same thing with sort of tungsten lamps, there is slight variance sort of from lot to lot of LED fixtures. Um, so that would be a very important thing is, and again, this is sort of similar to the Gobo thing, is if you're really critical with um, sort of colors and things like that in general, we'd recommend buying a larger group of fixtures just because if you buy, say, some now and some two, two years from now, you might get a slightly different color out of it like especially on camera probably the eyes won't see it but if you're having somebody take photos um, and it may not happen but it's just something with LED binning over time it's something to be sort of be aware of I guess we'd say um, and one last thing I'll mention as well um, about the LEDs is in terms of powering them um, we would highly recommend, uh, and this is assuming they're in the DMX control, is to have them on some kind of relay or something like that. Um, while it's possible to leave the LED fixtures on essentially 24-7, we find generally it seems that power supplies might burn out a little bit faster. So if you have easy access to the fixture, generally it's a warranty repair. It's not a big deal. Um, but if you have like a relay module you can throw them on, you'll get longer life before any of that sort of stuff happens and sort of more good lifetime for it. What about powering them through an SCR dimmer switch to hot? Don't do it. Yes. You will let the smoke out. Because <laughs> you're still, even if you're set on a non-dim, you're still going through the curve on the neutral. So yes. it's a classic mistake that everybody makes. Oh, I've set my dimmer to non-dim. I've set my control to non-dim. You are still, the rack itself is still a dimming item. 
Yeah, and unless it's a through power module, um, every single LED manufacturer will say don't use it. Um, and yeah, I mean, technically it might be possible where you don't run any terrors, but even if you do a sort of slight fade or something like that in the board, it can then run that fade through the fixtures and then that can essentially destroy the fixtures and anything that you damage with the fixtures by using like an SCR dimmer won't be covered under warranty. So it's just one of those things, just sort of little uh, head work, but yeah. Now if you put a relay module in your rack, you're okay because you're not susceptible to the choke. So instead of having to look at getting a whole new relay panel, if your rack is of an age where it will take a relay card, because the older ones will not, they can't talk to them, then you can just put a relay module in and that will allow you to just turn that power on or off. Yeah, and pretty much, unless you bought it like a decade plus ago, pretty much every ETC dimmer except the Smart Pack series, um, you should be able to essentially just swap out a dimmer module. They're generally in groups of two. Um, other manufacturers, it depends. Um, if your dimmer is really old, we might have a problem getting relay modules for it. But you know, you can always take a picture, email us, and you know, we can look at different solutions for you guys of what will work. Chris, you want to mention the color source relay? Huh? You might want to mention the color source. Oh yes, the, the color source relay. So that's another great thing as well. So if say your rack, uh, dimmer rack doesn't have any relays at all and it would require adding a relay panel, um, ETC's got a great product called the color source relay which is available either in a wired or a wireless version. And basically what that does is once it senses a DMX signal, it will relay and turn, turn an internal relay onto your fixtures. And it's just a little like a thing that can mount on the fixture yoke practically. Um, it's nice and easy. And then um, I believe it's a 15 amp relay. I could be wrong. It might be a 20 amp, but um, anyway, you can just use that, power con connectors. Um, the other really cool thing about the color source relay, um, especially for those of you who don't have like DMX distribution in your um, area, is it comes in two versions, either a hardwired version, which is essentially just normal five pin DMX in and out, or a wireless version, which essentially you can use wireless DMX, and so that way you have a little transmitter at your um, console, and then you can spread the color source relays out on your pipes, and that way even if you don't have DMX infrastructure, it's a really economical way to essentially add it into your facility. Um, and yeah, we have more information about that stuff as well if you guys don't. We don't have one here, but we have that on our website and yeah, it's a great product. There are lots of options for relays. It, it sort of depends on your specific application where if you have two racks and you're thinking about changing things out, maybe you take one rack offline and put a whole panel in. If you're thinking about changing six lights out on a front of house, there are different manufacturers that make, Cleaner makes uh, a DMX controlled relay device that you can use for stuff like that. So you need to look at your big picture and your plans as to whether you're changing an entire thing over, whether it makes sense to do a single unit or the best way. Because there's no one answer because there's no one problem. Everybody has their own situation, so everybody's going to need something specific. Um, I deal with a lot of production and a lot of worship installs, and I always tell people, have a plan first. And the most important thing, people forget about power. Because everybody goes, oh, I can run an extension cord. Think about your power, you're considering going to LED, really doesn't matter which manufacturer LED. Having the ability to turn the power on and off remotely is an excellent thing to be able to do. Um, but figure out the right thing that works for you and make sure that's figured into your budget because there's the cost of the LED and then, the, then there's the infrastructure cost. Yeah, and possibly installation, um, you know, depends on what you're comfortable with. But at the end of the day, you know, different solutions for each facility. So just let us know, um, info at muscle.com, give us a call. Um, and in most cases, since most of you guys made it here, we can probably come out to give you a site visit as well. So we can actually come out there, see what your facility's like, and give you sort of personalized recommendations as well. So, um, yeah. Any questions? Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, any benefits between 120 and 208? Any difference in operating? 
Pretty much all the LED fixtures you're going to be able to get are 120 volt. Um, they do have like other, well, and with a lot of these, most of the power supplies are sort of auto sensing. So it's like 110 to 240 or whatever. Um, but generally, I mean, there's not, you're not really going to see any significant change. It's not like they're going to get brighter or anything like that. Um, it's just different power source. So. No, not really. Yeah. I mean, pretty much with them. Um, yeah. I mean, LED, and that's another interesting topic, sort of the lifetime of the LEDs. But um, yeah, generally it, you know, should be fine. Any other questions? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to translate with it, but uh, during the LDI last year, BTC, during mm -hmm. the LDI last year, oh, yeah. BTC was talking about the, what was it, the full color LED. The color source, yes. Yeah, and then it was able to read the full spectrum. Yes. I just wonder how is that compared to this one? Color is uh, so we have the color source pretty much. We have the whole color source lineup, the PAR, um, the spot in our showroom, along with a bunch of ETC color mixing fixtures. Um, so if you guys want to check those out, you can certainly stop by the showroom on your way out. Um, we have the same sort of fabric we have here, and it can sort of give you an idea for color rendering and stuff like that. Um, the one thing with the color source series from ETC is by default, their white point is 5600K. So it's a lot cooler than what you see here. Um, so it's something with the DM Next console, you can probably create a preset where you know it, you give it more of a tungsten look, but that's just one thing to sort of be aware of. Um, that's one of the differences. But overall, color mixing, it's a great fixture. Um, it's probably you know the best bang for your buck fixture you're going to get. Period. Um, it's yeah. I mean, you can go up there and see it, but it's so really if bright. You have mm -hmm. one different color. The other one would be better choice. It's this one. Oh well. Well, it all depends on your application. So, I mean, it, like for a lot of churches or stuff like that where they're not really changing color um, or like fixed installations where you might put a gel in there and you leave it for two years, then the white LED is probably going to be fine um, and you can probably save a little bit of money. But if you are somebody who has like a performing arts center, you're changing colors, you know, frequently, probably we would recommend looking at the color source, um, you know, or the, the source for LED instead. Um, but at the end of the day, sort of each venue is unique. So, you know, let us know and we can sort of give you the options. And in most cases, we can even arrange like demo meters, if you want to sort of do a shootout in your facility, um, we do have pretty much all the ETC fixtures that we can get for you in house for a demo. Um, we have you can also get different manufacturers. Yes, but yeah, stuff, so you can look at, you know, Chevet, ETC, Electrolyte, Alation, Jim Bob's Light. Uh, we probably can't get Jim Bob's Light, um, but that would be the slang for. The Asian knockoffs that people buy. Um, but for this, the purposes of this demo, we concentrated on white light and trying to give as apples to apples of a, well, if I have this now, what are my other options specific to just white light? Color's a whole different conversation. It's a whole different topic. And it's a whole different demo. This was all about, well, if I put gel in front of this, what does it look like? Exactly. That's not mixed version. Which is why we have gel and gobos down there. Um, what does it look like on camera? We have an HD camera with an HD monitor. That's full 1080 HD, so you can see the differences. Um, for those not video savvy, your brain is OK with spaces and vacuums, so it doesn't see all the spaces. So it doesn't see the voids and light. It doesn't see a lot of the blossoming, which is that glow of, out of an LED, the camera does. So you may not see it while you're filming, but you'll see it in post. So we tried to recreate that over there. So as people meander around, you can run things up and down and see how it looks on camera. Um, if you're ever in a situation where you don't have a camera and need to know, Everybody has an LED test kit in their pocket known as their phone. You can actually take video and look at it, and it'll tell you what it's going to do on camera. And it'll tell you if it's going to have that blossom. It's going to tell you if it has that flicker. So luckily, we all have the $700 light meter built into our phone. I'm done interrupting. Cool. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> What's <laughs> happening? And um, and I probably said it two or three times, but the the one thing I did also remember that I just forgot to mention. So one thing with LEDs is unlike tungsten fixtures where they have sort of what we call redshift, where as you dim it down, the fixture gets redder. 
no LEDs other than ETC's Source 4 LEDs, the X7 ones, will have that. So it will keep that color temperature all the way down. Um, in a lot of cases, it probably won't matter or it's desirable, but if you have picky designers who like using, like, say, a really specific gel and dimming it down to 10, 20%, it's going to look different in LEDs. So they just need to be aware of it. You can probably find a different gel that will meet their needs, but it's sort of something to, you know, make sure you're all on the same page ahead of time type thing. Um, yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, with the gel, is, is there any sort of estimated life, obviously, like an RE3 is going to burn through really quick on the regular coating mm -hmm. mixture? It's still emitting some heat, it's still warm, but not nearly. Yeah, it sh I'm pretty sure it should last longer. One of the things we'll be doing sort of after this is we'll actually be taking some gel, some of the common cuts, and actually sort of running it for a week or so so we can get an idea of how long those last yeah. Um, yeah, as you guessed, though, there's a lot less heat in the beam, so it should last longer theoretically. Granted, there's little photons hitting it, so there is, we'll probably, you know, burn out, but um, yeah, it should last longer in general. Yeah. Yes and no. Um, and it depends on what else the fixture is being used with. An LED backlight, so this all here is all LED backlight. LED backlight with any kind of angle that's in front is going to give you a lag delay in video because your camera's trying to find the difference between it, which is why it's hard, especially if you have an older camera. Um, SD, just don't do it. It'll hurt your head. Um, if it's all LED, what you're looking at here, specifically, we have a completely different manufacturer. Everything here is made by Electrolyte, so... And it's available for rent, by the way. Oh, sorry. Rent. <laughs> um, if we tried to do the same manufacturer, manufacturer, they're all going to dim the same way. They're all going to step through the same way because they're all using the same engineering. By picking something that doesn't make one of these, you can see what happens because not everybody has the same family of gear in their theater or you have a rental situation where you're mixing a bunch of things. You can get a little bit of wave, you can get a little bit of just, um, it's diode compensation, and which, which is sort of why the camera's there, so you can sort of see what happens, because your brain won't see it, your eyes won't see it. The camera will see it. I always get complaints from the uh, And a lot of times they can fix that with their own gear. Um, which is a hard thing to say. Oh, that's not my problem, it's yours. Um, it's easy for me to say. <laughs> but everything here dims comparably, and most of the flicker that you see these days, this runs at 200 hertz. So you should be well above the rate of the camera. Because that's, at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to do. Your light source needs to be above the source of what's shooting it. So anything that's over 200 or above, and I cannot tell you what any of these, what all of these run out. 12, 15, somewhere around there. Anyway, yeah. sorry. So they, anything above 200 hertz, you shouldn't have a flicker. With your lower end LEDs, they don't raise their cycle rate. So that's where a lot of your flicker comes from. The camera can modulate to adjust that, but you lose your depth because you're adjusting your f-stops. Sorry, I went really technical for a moment. <laughs> Yeah, and then for some of these fixtures mainly, I know at least the ETC ones allow, with the Source 4 LED series, not the color source, you can actually change the um, uh, frequency, refresh rate, essentially. So it defaults to about 1,200 to 1,500, but if for, you have some high-speed camera or something, for a lot of the ETC fixtures, you can just dial that down or up as needed. So, yeah. So we've been talking for a while. Any other questions? Are you guys ready to sort of play around?